Hey folks, I just wanted to overview some of the aspects of this Girard mandolin. Uh, I've been getting a couple inquiries this is for sale on Reverb and Mandolin Cafe and I just wanted to do a video to kind of go over it a little bit so people could see it a little more closely. So here's the case, so it's pretty much a standard case and you know, it had a couple stickers on it but you know, no issues, it's just the case. So this is a 2014, this would be the A5 model. Um, it is a standard wood combination, so it's a spruce top. You see a nice tight uh, grain pattern to it there. Uh, it's a spruce top and then it's all maple. They actually have a high flame grade, all uh, flame maple neck and back. Um, it has, I would call it, you know, I would say excellent condition. There's not really any dings or dents in it. There's no pick scratches. There may be a couple little dimples that I can't really find, you know, like maybe around here, just a, a little dimple. Um, I'm a light picker and I don't, I don't use a guard and I don't ever get into the body. So it's never been an issue for me. Nothing there. Um, on the back side, there's like one little ding right here pretty minor can't really you know see it too well in the video but other than that it's you know just a couple little marks I mean it's used but it's in good condition there's one little thing here on the back of the headstock um, again just a minor but that's about it really no, no big gouges or any problems or anything beautiful beautiful mandolin it just looks flawless from the top so again, this was a this would have been a studio, um, the equivalent of a studio model that with upgrades to get it closer to I think what's the if the ensembles the next tier up, but basically the upgrades on it are you would start at a studio model and then this is the James tailpiece so this is a um, higher end tailpiece from the cast one that comes stock on there, um, so that's an upgrade of a few hundred dollars. Uh, it has the three ply binding on the top, so it's actually got tortoise shell around the outside and then it's got uh, fine lines of white black on the inside which just kind of uh, frames the top nicely and then it has a you know upgraded custom uh, paint job on it so this would be a you know the burst that's on there um, and then other than that it also has this um, the the K and uh, K and M K and K you know, the, the twin internal pickup system uh, that, that goes into there and so you basically have two transducers that are mounted here and here it can be removed you'd have to plug the, the hole here with the again with the um, with a strap button but uh, has two passive transducers right in here and here uh, you can't even really see them if I go down kind of like right actually right there and there this is all professionally installed um, you can't see it, you can't hear it, it's just, it's, it's in there if you need it to plug in. Um, the nut width on this, and I measured from the outside, it's the, it's the wider nut, it appears to be 1 and 3 sixteenths when I measure it, but it was actually uh, built and came with a, a second nut here, and this one measures the, the narrower, so this one would be like 1 and 8, and then it has a 1 and 3 sixteenth installed. Max did all this um, with some... Uh, setting up and restringing it so I'll do some audio demos inside but I just wanted to kind of go over the the body of it the body color and, and just the, the condition you know it's a beautiful mandolin um, it's got a beautiful profile I don't exactly know what to call the neck carves I mean I would I play a lot of jazz arch tops and stuff I find this uh, really comfortable I see the um, I see the uh, I've had I've had a Weber and I've had a Collins before, and I find the Weber necks to be pretty big and beefy um, for you know for mandolin, and I find the Collins, at least the standard ones that I've had, to be a little um, narrower, a little sharper, and I would call this in between. I mean, I don't know if it, I don't want to get into words like a you know soft V C somewhere in there hybrid or something, but it's um, it feels a little bit fuller and, and rounder to me than some of the narrower necks I've seen, but maybe not quite as big as a uh, 
um, a Weber, but I, I do find it really comfortable to hold. It's just, it's got a really nice taper. It's really natural um, and just fits the hand well. It's the nicest neck uh, profile and fret work that I've seen on a mandolin that I've played. Um, you know, to contrast it with the Webers, the Webers I think have a little mellower tone. The Collins I've had are a little bright and and bitey, They're, you know, it's a very strident, those are very strident instruments, and I would just call this right in the middle. It's got a, a good mellow chop to it. It's a, it's a kind of a relaxed sound compared to some of the tighter bluegrass mandolins. I mean, it definitely does bluegrass and has chop, but I would call it more in like the, the, the you know, the, the Girards have kind of their own tone, and I would call it on the mellower, a uh, little on the mellower side, which I find a little more versatile myself. But I'll go in and I'll just do some video of the plane and I'll tack it onto the end here. Frets are in great condition, not a lot of play, not a lot of wear. Um, beautiful. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to play a few notes on this now. Mm -hmm. 